With the breaking of the Durham report this week, we saw how the media reacted to this earth shattering, well, at least for them, this news. Now let's talk about the crimes revealed in the report. I'm Mike Huckabee with your May 18th edition of The Breakdown. Before we get started, if you get to the end of this video and find it informative, please consider subscribing to the channel with the button below and be sure to click the notification bell. Now on to the news of the day. First, a hearty congratulations to Senator Bernie Sanders for proving that, like Ponzi schemes and other cons, socialism pays really well. Well, for those at the top. Thanks to his selfless devotion to socialism and public service, Bernie has raked in over $5 million in the past 10 years, and now he's nearly doubled his 2022 income thanks to profits from his new book, Attacking Capitalism, and the related book tour that charged attendees up to $100 a piece. The irony of this is just laugh out loud funny, except for the suckers who still follow Bolshevik Bernie, like he's some economic guru. No word on whether Bernie will be giving any of that money to the government so they can spend more wisely than he possibly could. Why, he'd probably just blow it on a fourth house. He already has three. I guess only evil capitalists like Donald Trump donate their entire salaries back to the government. And now for more on the big news of the week, the Durham Report. We know the word framer in a positive way, as in the framers of the Constitution. But in a different context, that word takes on a sinister edge, as in the framers of Donald Trump. President Trump was deliberately framed as a Russian agent in a totally made-up plot hatched within the Hillary Clinton campaign. Certain people, including Presidents Biden and Obama, knew full well this was a frame-up, a political hit job by our intel bureaucracy against a political candidate, but they let it go forward and lied to the American people. Others actively falsified evidence, lied in sworn statements, and planted fake stories with the media. If you or I framed an innocent person, we would and should face charges for that, both civilly and criminally. The FBI targeted innocent people who just happened to be caught in the crossfire. George Papadopoulos, a really nice guy who has appeared as a guest on my TV show, was one such person. The FBI paid a fake source, Igor Danshanko, paid him for fake information, and then knowing it was fake, continued to pay him $300,000 for his work. Igor Danchenko was tied to the Brookings Institution, run by, wow, Hillary Clinton crony Strobe Talbot. What a shock. A clip was dug up of Obama lying to Chris Wallace on camera with his guarantee that no one was being treated differently by the justice system when he knew about the plot to take down Trump with a made-up story. There is no political influence in any investigation conducted by the Justice Department or the FBI, not just in this case, but in any case. And she will be- Full stop, period. And she will be treated no differently? Guaranteed, full stop. Nobody gets treated differently when it comes to the Justice Department because nobody is above the law. Even if she ends up as the Democratic- How many times do I have to say, Chris? Guaranteed. Wow, it's amazing. Looking back, how smoothly and deftly President Obama can lie. If he hadn't gone into politics, he could have had a great career as an actor or poker player. If this isn't a crime, framing innocent people to conduct a bloodless coup in the United States, then what is a crime? Is the real crime simply being on the wrong political side? Senator Josh Hawley makes the case that Hillary Clinton deserves to be prosecuted. There needs to be a lot more than reports, Jesse. People need to be prosecuted for this. The Clinton campaign and Hillary Clinton herself, is it any coincidence that she is tweeting about collusion at exactly the same time her campaign operatives are feeding this BS to the FBI? I don't think so. There needs to be consequences for her and also for the FBI. FBI leadership has clearly got to be changed. And Jesse, I'm of the mind we need to end the FBI as we know it. Couldn't have said it better myself. Now, speaking of practiced liars like Obama, California Representative Adam Schiff is still sticking to his story about Paul Manafort colluding with Russians, saying again that Manafort provided some internal polling data from the Trump campaign. He also is still trying to implicate Don Jr. and Michael Flynn. After years of investigation, none of those allegations have been determined to be significant, but Schiff distorts the facts and he sticks to his story like flypaper. It bears reminding people the Russians intervened heavily to elect Donald Trump. 
They engaged in a hacking and dumping operation, uh, hacking Hillary Clinton's emails and dumping them to influence the election. They uh, engaged in a an expensive social media campaign out of a troll farm in St. Petersburg to help get Donald Trump elected. Uh, so there were real things to investigate there, uh, and the Mueller team did, we did in Congress. Uh, on the other hand, the investigation of the investigators by Durham revealed uh, little to nothing uh, and was a spectacular failure at court. It appears the Democrats and deep staters did this because they believed their views were so right that it was okay to cheat. And that explains why they did what they did, but it does not excuse it in any way. These people created the Hitler-style boogeyman that they despised in order to give themselves the green light for anything they wanted to do. But none of what they claimed made Trump a boogeyman. Well, none of that was true. But now America is suffering the consequences of their half-decade hoax and witch hunt, and the trust in America's government institutions has been thoroughly poisoned, if not destroyed. They became far worse than what they claimed Trump was. And this is also the reason to continue to be nervous about funny business in the 2024 election. The GOP candidate will either be President Trump or someone the Democrats paint as Trump's proxy, and that gives them all the excuse they need to interfere in every way they can. It is their duty, after all. Durham's report makes official what we've known for a long time, that all roads lead back to Hillary Clinton. Came right out of her kitchen. Probably the only thing Hillary has cooked in her kitchen. We can say the Alpha Bank hoax, for example, apparently was her brainchild, or that of someone on her campaign, likely Jake Sullivan, who is currently President Biden's national security advisor, and went forward with her blessing and participation. And there's the ridiculous dossier paid for by her campaign. Victoria Taft at PJ Media makes the case that Hillary must pay for the damage she's caused, if not with jail time and monetarily. Much of the damage can be itemized and Taft takes a stab at it, although I might say the harm to Trump personally through the years of having that cloud over his head might be beyond calculation. Here are just a few of the items. The Mueller report cost the American taxpayers $32 million. The Durham investigation has so far spent $6,656,507 through September of 2022. Millions of dollars in attorney fees for Donald Trump. And considering that the Clinton Foundation shakedown took in $111,959,695 in just the years 2017, 18, and 19. That's after she lost the presidential election. She's got some real shekels to work with even after her fake expenses. Recall that a judge threw out Trump's massive lawsuit against many many of the same people who have been involved in the hoax. But Trump ought to try a focus lawsuit directed just at crooked Hillary. If no one will pay in prison, then I propose a penalty for Hillary Clinton out of her millions in shakedown dollars from her Clinton Foundation, which, by the way, was under investigation by the FBI and DOJ, an investigation subsequently shut down because the seventh floor of the Justice Building, where the big execs work, they didn't want to upset Madam President. Libel, slander, seditious conspiracy, spying, lying to the American people, interfering with an election, the list of crimes committed in the making of the Trump-Russia lie is a mile long, and the chain gang responsible for the lie ought to be just as long. There's only one way we have any real hope of that happening, Trump 2024. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell below, and be sure to leave a like. Also, tune into the live stream on Friday. I'll do my best to answer the questions that you send in on the chat. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, it's real simple to get it. Just sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. Comes to your email inbox twice a day, and it is totally free. That's it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.